From Grangeville to Lapway, we've got your District 2 breakdown right here on the Palouse PrepCast with Garrison Hardy. That's right. Welcome into another edition of the Palouse PrepCast here on IdahoSports.com, your weekly stop for everything District 2 athletics in the state of Idaho. Brandon Bainey with the aforementioned Garrison Hardy. Garrison, what's going on? Well, it is kickoff time. It is officially here, folks. And, you know, we got Friday night football. But not only that, Jason, my co-host, and I get to double dip. And we get to cover a game this Saturday as well. And we'll be talking about that, too. So uh, just it's just that time of year, Brandon. Uh, no other way to say it. Yeah, it's super exciting. Uh, the football season kind of kicked off last week. There were three games total throughout the state of Idaho, not, none from District 2. So up where you're at, it really gets going this week. I know some of the eight-man schools are going down to compete in the eight-man classic in Middleton. But where you're going to be this Friday night is at Lewiston High for a rematch of the season opener a year ago. They will host the CUNA Cavemen from the Southern Idaho Conference uh, just outside of Boise. Should be an exciting time. Absolutely. First of all, what a great name, the CUNA Cavemen. I really like uh, the what they're working with there. And you mentioned last year's game; it was a it was a barn burner. It was a thirty-seven to thirty. That game, Lewiston ended up coming out with the win. Uh, so you know, but who who's to say that this game can't be competitive as well? Uh, now this time around, CUNA have to make a bit of a trip. Uh, so they'll have that working against them. But at the same point, it could be a bonding experience for the team on the way up. Yeah, I, I like to see this type of game get scheduled because, you know, if you're Lewis, like last year, Lewiston had to go to CUNA, right? And that's a pretty long trip. Uh, and, and this year, CUNA has got to go up there because as a coach, you have to know that at some point when it gets to the playoffs, especially at the 5A level and you're like Lewiston, like you're, you're going to have to travel somewhere and it, there's nowhere close to travel, right? Exactly. Yeah. So if anything, it's kind of a test run of guys. This is what we're this is what we're going to be pushing for towards the end of the season. And like you said, uh, Lewiston, you know, the, as far as even in their conference, they've got some two hour trips here and there, which isn't, you know, and isn't as bad as compared to what they had to do with the trip to CUNA. But still, uh, it's uh, it's something to kind of prepare them, get the muscle memory going. Uh, you know, we, we talk about jet lag. There is a thing of bus lag. So, uh, you know, that's something that uh, could be a mental thing and a preparation thing as we get closer to playoff time. And, and as a former college football player yourself, Garris, and I'm sure you've heard coaches all the time, it's a business trip, fellas. We're, we're going on a business trip. We're going to just go take care of business. <laughs> it's, that's exactly it. Yeah, we uh, we had numerous games uh, from Lewiston trips all the way out to Seattle, to Portland. Uh, and those were long ones, let me tell you. And, uh, you know, sleeping in a different bed the night before in a hotel. Uh, the high school side of things, they don't have to do that quite as much. Uh, but uh, it's all mental at that point in time. You know, remembering what you worked on in practice all off season, rem remembering your job as your position. Uh, all of that really comes into play uh, when it comes to really long road trips. And that's something the cavemen are really going to have to take into consideration. So looking at this game from a bird's eye view, I think coming in Lewiston probably favored. We we did preseason coaches polls for all of the different conferences around the state. And CUNA was picked either last or second to last in almost every single poll that came out. So I don't think expectations are high uh, for CUNA in terms of what everybody thinks. But that can be the most dangerous team sometimes, right? Hundred percent. Yeah, you know, uh, we we look at CUNA. They went one and seven last year, and there is a little bit upheaval with regards to uh, they've got a new coach in uh, Jeff Shank, uh, and then they lost their uh, their quarterback as well. Who, by the way, uh, he was a. a John Austin, that's who I'm speaking of. He was a first team also. You know, you lose that part of it. Um, and, you know, from Lewiston's perspective, uh, the danger would be to think, oh, well, th there's a new coach. They didn't have a great season last year. They lost one of their best players. Now, you know, we're just going to roll these guys over. But I'm, I'm, I promise you, Coach Pancarry is preaching how they really need to come out guns a-blazing and take care of business and treat this as a, just, I know, a big-time game. Yeah, Sean Austin was such a great talent as a University of Montana fan. It just kills me that he's playing quarterback for the Montana State Bobcats now, but <laughs> it's neither here nor there, I suppose. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so, so they do. They have Kuna has a lot of questions. They also have a lot of transfers. Um, they've got, you know, I think three or four players that have come from California, and we're we're seeing that up and down the the Boise Valley, where every team I'm looking at their their team preview, whether it's uh, Kuna or Hawaii or Boise High, there is an influx of uh, new players from California, Oregon and Washington. And you talked about the population growing where you're at, but are, are we seeing these impact type of players coming to like Lewiston High from neighboring states? You know, we haven't seen that as much lately. Uh, and I guess that's kind of to be expected when you look in comparison to the Boise area, which is just a booming city as far as it start as the way it's starting to grow. My mom lives in CUNA and every time we're down there, there's new businesses, new buildings popping up left and right. That being said, I think this new high school building for Lewiston is going to play uh, pay dividends down the road when it comes to attracting uh, new businessmen, businesswomen. Uh, I think that was a real struggle for Lewiston for a long time was when they would look at that old high school facility that uh, students were in and there was overcrowding. Uh, the facility itself was starting to degrade a little bit when it comes to, you know, it, some of the ceiling uh, was actually falling apart. Uh, so this new excellent facility, which rivals the Boise facilities, I think is going to be great when it comes to bringing in uh families from out of state, out of town, you name it. Uh, and as a result, we're going to start seeing that talent trickle in. Haven't really seen it just yet, but I think Lewiston could very well be heading in that direction. Yeah, it's interesting that the state of Idaho, you know, not to get too political on things, but if you look at Idaho tends to be maybe more conservative than some of those states like Washington, Oregon, California, right. and people want maybe that different way of life, different pace of life. And then I think with COVID-19, especially, you know, school states like California, Washington, and Oregon have been very quickly to let's pump the brakes. Let's, let's rescind everything where Idaho has been more open to let's try and play through the season and see what happens. And I think that's having a big impact. Absolutely. There's just a, a little bit more freedom on that side of things. And, you know, especially for uh, families who have kids in high school who love sports, but, maybe aren't getting that opportunity in those states you just mentioned. I think that plays a big impact. And, uh, you know, they're looking at Idaho, one of the fastest growing states in the country. I think it was the number one state that people were moving to, actually. Uh, they see, you know, the, the direction it's headed. And that's alluring to a lot of people, especially to people who have kids who happen to be athletes, kids who they want their, you know, they want their children to be able to enjoy the final years of their education, or maybe if they're just starting out in high school, they want them to be able to enjoy it, enjoy or ex those extracurricular activities such as sports. So I, I completely agree. I think that's kind of the direction maybe things are headed. And, um, you know, hope we're certainly hopeful for our neighbors across the border here in Washington that they're going to get to uh, have some sports. Uh, but again, yeah, the politics is kind of drifted into sports as well. The lines are blurred. That is for sure. Let's get back between the lines on the football field where we talked about CUNA. So they're kind of a young team. They have a new quarterback, new, you know, Isaac Garcia, uh, promising junior uh, running back, slot back type player. He'll probably be the focal point of the offense. Uh, when you look at Lewiston, where do you think the Bengals could possibly have an advantage over CUNA? For me, I look at that, uh, the, the offensive line side of things. The defensive line is probably going to be Lewiston, one of their big strengths. Uh, even with the loss of Alec Eckert, who you know is now heading off to play college ball, uh, they still have a lot of depth on the defensive line side of things. So, uh, And you look at CUNA, they want to be a running team. So if Lewiston's able to control the point of attack and win in the trenches, well, there goes CUNA's game plan as far as really wanting to run the ball more. So if Lewiston wins that matchup, uh, I, I think that uh, could really cause some trouble for the cavemen. So uh, check the, the, the uh, defensive line side of things is probably where I'd point to, uh, as well as uh, the linebackers. So um, Lewiston, with those two fronts right there, I think uh, that's where they could force an advantage. And how about when Lewiston has the ball offensively last year, you had in theory, cash Lang spreading the ball around to a stable of good receivers, Jared Granger, Devin Zagalo, uh, Jesse 80 was a pretty good tight end, but those guys are all gone now. So, so you have Cruz Hepburn back at running back and Jace McCarcher back who 
split at quarterback. Is is Lewiston going to focus on a run based attack? Who who steps up at wide receiver? Yeah, well, I definitely think it's going to be run. They they they're going to want to run the ball if they can do that. But as far as the wide receiver thing goes, uh, I think it's going to be by committee. Uh, you know, Lewiston is going to it. Like last year, they ran the ball a ton. But when defenses start keying in on that, that's when uh, that's when the coaching staff is going to start looking to air it out and find those openings. So if they can go by committee, I uh, um, I think that that's what they'll probably end up doing. Um, and Lewiston has great athletes all over the place, you know, the, as far as speed is concerned. So um, they're going to spread the ball around. They're going to throw in some trickeration when it comes to the motion on their go-go offense, which you and I have talked about uh, the past couple of weeks here. Uh, so look for by committee when it comes to receiver, because, uh, you know, as you mentioned, uh, it's a little bit inexperienced on that side of things. That's probably going to be the attack point that CUNA can focus in on is Lewiston's inexperience at receiver. We talk about the 5A landscape and it's, it's kind of uncommon in the regular season to have a team from district one and two play a school from district three or a team from district three play a team from district five and six. Everybody kind of just sticks to their, they stay in their own lanes. So it's, right. it's always fascinating to me when you get these five, a matchups with teams from opposing conferences. I think this is a good opportunity for Lewiston to begin building its resume, so to speak, in terms of putting together a playoff portfolio. Absolutely. You and I have talked about the new playoff format uh, frequently. Um, and that I think that definitely comes into play uh, when you want to, you want to schedule uh, good quality opponents uh, you know, that will not only build momentum uh, and maybe some confidence for yourself, but also uh, that will, that the playoff committee, you know, will, will take note of uh, and really maybe bolster your chances. And then when you look at Lewiston's conference uh, you know, you got uh, Lake city, you got, uh, post falls, you have quarter lane and everybody knows quarter lane is going to be a force. Uh, so if Lewiston can pick up some solid wins like this against CUNA, uh, against a team that they don't see so much, that's from that Boise area. Uh, like you said, a, a good resume builder. I think Lewiston has a good chance to possibly be at the top of the standings after this first initial week of play, because when you look at the other teams that are in the district, um, Coeur d'Alene's going to play at the Rocky Mountain Rumble against a, a school from Utah. You know, Lake City is going to have to turn around and play a Lakeland team, which already has a game under its belt. And Post Falls has to go play Sandpoint, the defending 4A IEL champ. So all three of those games are, are a toss up to me. I think Lewiston could be the only team that escapes in week one with a victory. Absolutely. And it, you and I have talked about how competitive this uh, 5A Inland Empire League uh, is. If Lewiston can get the leg up early on, get that confidence going, get the momentum trending in the right direction at home in front of your home fans, that would be huge for the rest of the way. Because, uh, you know, on paper, you know, uh, Lewiston is picked to finish in the lower side of things. But uh, that's why football isn't played on paper. You know, so if uh, if uh, Coach Pancarry can get this team going with this win. And then, like you said, if that all falls into place and everybody else loses, uh, talk about a boost to morale, uh, which, you know, definitely plays into uh, how, how some of these things turn out. Yeah, it'll be an exciting one for sure. Friday night, 7 o'clock from Lewiston. CUNA against Lewiston. Garrison Hardy and Jason Hansen will have the call. And then you guys are going to turn around and get a little shut eye, but you're going to have to uh, trek on over to Moscow on Saturday for the first varsity football game in Logos school history. Pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, talk about uh, getting the chance to double dip on opening weekend for us, uh, at least up here in District 2. Uh, and uh, Logos has a beautiful new field uh, that they're ready to unveil. A lot of hungry fans fans that I'm sure are excited to see making that step into uh, the land of varsity. <laughs> uh, but uh, on the other side, they've got Timberline coming in, who, you know, by the way, was averaging 30 points a game last season. So, uh, you know, but hopefully Logos isn't in for a rude awakening. <laughs> but in any case, uh, yeah, it's it's going to it's an exciting setup. Yeah, Timberline went, uh, I think, four and four a year ago and got into the playoffs, which was exciting for a, right. for a team that hadn't 
tasted that type of success in a, in a couple of years. So uh, even though it's a, a, a division lower, D2 versus D1 school, um, I think Timberline from WEIP is going to be a tough, tough opening test. Absolutely. And they're experienced too. You know, you look on the uh, offensive line, they've got most of the offensive line back, which in eight man, obviously it's, it's a smaller line, but they've still got it back. They also have uh, their quarterback back, uh, their quarterback. I have it written down here somewhere. Uh, Parker Brown, they have their running back, uh, Rylan West, Micah Nelson at wide receiver. So they've got some playmakers back on top of that, because they're linemen are back they, they play both ways in eight man uh they're hopefully going to be able to control the point of attack uh, allowing for those aforementioned playmakers to come up and fill the gaps make tackles uh this is an experienced team they know how to score they put up 72 points against salmon river last season uh so logos is in for a tough test and i'll just add this both programs kind of had similar pathing when you think about it with uh, timberline a couple years ago they weren't even able to field a team that just because of lack of player numbers, then they make the jump to six man, but eight man. And like you said, they made the playoffs. So talk about a trajectory there for a program. And there's uh, some belief in that program that they can challenge for the playoffs again on Logos side of things uh, that they've been a force when it comes to running, when it comes to basketball. They've So the athletes are there. They just haven't been able to put it all together in a package for a football team. Uh, unfortunately, football is probably one of the toughest sports to uh, as far as, uh, you know, putting it all together just because each position has a job to do. And uh, there's a choreography to it, honestly. Uh, you know, if the if the offensive line doesn't do its job, if the quarterback doesn't do its job, if the receivers don't do their individual jobs, uh, it, it can fall apart. So Nick, Coach Holloway, great guy over there. They've got a good staff of players over there. Skylar Craycraft, for incident, uh, instance, former WSU player. There's some knowledge over there with that staff. And, and now it's just time to put it all together. And last thing I'll say, too, uh, Logos has a lot of experience. You know, I'll just uh, read it off here. Aiden Elmore running back, senior, River Sumter at center, which is an important position on the offensive line, senior, Judah Merkel, senior, uh, uh, and then uh, Will Casebolt, senior, uh, Jackson Krapuchets, senior. So, you know, even though this is going to be their first year at varsity football, they have experience from the JV side of things now transferring over to varsity. Yep. And, and you have to figure in a JV, JV schedule, they're playing a lot of the same schools and mm -hmm. that they're going to see this year and we'll maybe even see some of the same players. So, yeah. Right. Yep. This program has been building silently uh, in the background and uh, now they're ready to unveil it. I actually get to go out to the field this Friday to check it out and where we'll be set up for Saturday and whatnot and meet with the AD there. So there is just the, there's just a real excitement with Logos which builds to a, uh, an exciting set uh, for the uh, Knights versus the Spartans this Saturday. So you, uh, you fans are going to want to tune in uh, at, for that 2 o'clock game. Yeah, that'll be on IdahoSports.com with uh, Garrison and Jason Hansen. I think people are sleeping on both of these teams. Timberline was picked to finish fourth in the preseason coaches poll out of, out of four teams. And Logos was picked to finish eighth in the White Pine League. But they were I, I had coaches picking Logos as high as fifth. And and as low as eighth, so I think I think uh, there's a lot of potential for for Logos here in this uh, first ever game. It's going to be exciting. Absolutely, and the jury's still out. I mean, with this Logos team, uh, they they could just explode onto the scene with all that experience coming into play. Um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting to see what uh, what kind of game plan they come up with on offense uh, and as far as the defensive side as well. Um, and then uh, for yeah, for Timberline, I'm excited to see them play because of that, how explosive they can be as a team. I mean, 72 points that's nothing to sneeze at. And that's those are the kinds of scores we can see in eight man. So for all we know, Jason and I could be in for quite the shootout this Saturday on IdahoSports.com. And those are always fun to commentate. So uh, I'm just excited we get to uh, cover two of them this weekend. Yeah, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. Other games in District 2 uh, that we'll want to keep an eye on. Moscow traveling to Grangeville to uh, play the 2A Bulldogs. That should be a good matchup. Uh, you've got Lewis County traveling to Lakeside, a team that's favored to win their district this season. Uh, you've got Orofino traveling to McCall Donnelly, so 2A playing up against a 3A squad. And then you've got four teams from uh, up north, 
that will be traveling down to Middleton to compete in the eight man classic. And we will have all right. of those games for you right here on IdahoSports.com. Let's just run through each of these real quick. Uh, you've got Kendrick, which is, uh, I, I think, a title favorite in 1AD2, taking on Lighthouse Christian. That's uh, two pretty powerful programs. I've had the chance to cover both of those programs in my time there. Uh, now, Lighthouse, uh, when I covered them, uh, they they lost pretty badly to, to Grangeville. But still, as far as uh, that program is concerned, they've had some great wins under their belt. Kendrick, you know, it seems like they're the team that, Throughout the regular season, they're building these 5-0, and 6-0, and 7-0 and records only for maybe an injury to kind of come into play. And then they just run out of steam right, you know, right at the end. So if Kendrick uh, is able to stay healthy, like you said, could very well be title favorites. It'll be interesting to see how they do against Lighthouse Christian. You mentioned Moscow and Grangeville. That's always a fun one. And they've started playing each other pretty regularly. Um, you know, so uh, I'm going to be curious to see how that one pans out. Grangeville, always a tough out, but Moscow, probably pretty confident after last season, what they were able to put together. Um, so again, those those games, all interesting that you mentioned. Yeah, and our Idaho 8-man uh, prep cast we do where we just talk about 8-man football, uh, Paul Kingsbury went out on a limb and said he, he thought Kendrick was going to win. Uh -huh. The one AD two title this year, so we'll have to see other other games at that eight man classic. Um, you've got Prairie, which is the favorite in the White Pine League, taking on a Glens Ferry team that is kind of middle of the pack in their district. We, that sh that should be a nice win for Prairie. We're thinking, and then the two matchups I'm really excited about: Clearwater Valley, a team that we have kind of identified as maybe a dark horse sleeper team this year. They're going to play the runner up from a year ago, Raft River. That should be a great matchup. Absolutely. I got the chance to drive out to Clearwater with Paul uh, for uh, for a game last year. And uh, we'd, you know, we'd love to go back out there. But gosh, it's such a drive for me. I mean, oh, my goodness. So yeah. uh, in any case, I'm excited to see how they take step, continue to take those steps in the upward trajectory that they've been making. And like you said, against Raft River, that's a good matchup right there. We just have a lot of good matchups is uh, kind of the gist of what we're getting at here, folks, all on IdahoSports.com. But uh, for Clearwater, I think, uh, you know, obviously with, uh, you know, with the Pirates out there, uh, they're always going to be towards the favorite side of things. And they always have great athletes and uh, the coaching staff knows what they're going to do. They're always explosive on offense. I think I read through the numbers with you last year, how they scored 60 or 70 points numerous times throughout the season. So it's going to be a tall task, but um, you never, you know, that's again, I always say it. That's why these games aren't played on paper. That's right. Clearwater Valley was picked uh, second in the preseason coaches poll in the White Pine League. And then I think potentially the best uh, sneaky matchup, the Lapway Wildcats taking on the defending uh, 1A D1 state champs from Oakley. So uh, Lapway is a team that's always in the mix, it seems like. Uh, maybe they can take a step forward and, hey, they get the defending champs right off the bat. Talk about a tough way to open things up. You know, the, unfortunately for Lapway, they've lost a good bit of experience uh, and when it comes to the sporting side of things. So, you know, Oakley, really tough task. They actually took down the Pirates in the Kibbe Dome. Jason and I were on the call for that game, and they looked fantastic. So if they're able to carry that momentum into this season, uh, I look for Lapway to really have a hard time. But that being said, maybe, maybe Oakley's feeling overconfident. You know, they don't have that chip on their shoulder, so to speak, and they come up against a scrappy Lapway team who's always – always got athletes that that's just they always do one way or another they find a way to put their players in put the position to succeed and that could very well be the case here so for oakley i, I would caution them be on the lookout because lapway is a team that uh, really loves to play spoiler and uh, they always again they're always well coached one guy to keep an eye on for Lapway this weekend and throughout the season senior wide receiver titus year out he is one of the best basketball players in the state, regardless of classification, and he he brings it to the wide receiver position as well. That guy is is a stud. <laughs> he, he is so fun to watch. I've got uh, I was fortunate enough to see him play on the basketball side of things, and he is just phenomenal when it comes to the instinct of the game. 
his knowledge and understanding of what's required and asked of him. And I have no doubt that he'll bring that over to the football field and the gridiron. So he's just a smart player, plays the game the right way. And uh, yeah, uh, the, the, I think Oakley's going to have to find a way to contain him. Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic opening slate of football games. Again, you can uh, watch CUNA against Lewiston Friday night at 7 o'clock. You can watch Logos host Timberline in their first varsity contest ever Saturday at 2 o'clock. And you can watch every single game of the eight-man classic from Middleton all on idahosports.com. If you want to see the full schedule and rundown, I think we're doing 18 games here on this first weekend uh, across the state of Idaho. You can go to idahosports.com across the top of the navigation bar. You'll see the game streams uh, tab. You click that and it shows you the full rundown of games. Uh, We're going to be doing audio broadcasts and video broadcasts this year. It's going to be really exciting. Absolutely. And I'm just thrilled to be a part of this. They bring it to the table. And uh, the cool thing is, is you can watch numerous games at once. And just uh, just like you were watching college football on a Saturday on TV, you can flip over to check out games going off uh, in different districts across the state. Uh, we we really have something special here to offer on IdahoSports.com. We got great commentators. We have great photographers. We have great you know support staff that really helps make our job as commentators a lot easier uh, when it comes to uh, previews, when it comes to statistics, scores, you name it. It's all a package deal, folks, here on IdahoSports.com. And I'm just really excited to be bringing two of those 18 games here uh, this weekend. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a really fun time. Before we get out of here, Garrison, I did want to mention coming up this weekend, it's uh, one of the great yearly volleyball traditions up north, the Judy Fong Memorial Volleyball Tournament uh, held at Lewiston High. Uh, Judy Fong was the longtime volleyball coach at uh, Lewis and Clark State, LC State, and uh, sadly passed away from cancer in 2014. And uh, every year since then, they've, they've kind of held a memorial tournament at the start of the season. Kind of brings together a, w- a wide mix of teams up north. It's an eight-team field this year, it looks like. It's going to be, of course, Lewiston, the host. You'll also have Post Falls, which is a 5A school. You'll have 4A – oh, and Lake City as well. So three of the four teams from the uh, Inland Empire League will be there. You'll have Sandpoint and Lakeland. Those are a pair of uh, 4A programs. Kellogg, which is a 3A school. And then you've got Troy and Genesee, which are 1A programs. Mm-hmm. So you've got 5A all the way down to 1A. It's going to be going on all uh, Saturday at uh, Lewiston High, the Judy Fong Memorial Tournament. Yeah, talk about a great way to kick off the season uh, when it comes to you know looking forward. And uh, you and I talked about it a little bit before. These games do count towards uh, their final records and whatnot. So uh, there's there's something to be played for on top of it. Just remembering a great person uh, for this tournament. So uh, you know, uh, as a player, I always liked these kind of of opening season tournaments. We would have it sometimes on the basketball side of things. So it doesn't surprise me to see it here with volleyball. They do a lot of stuff like that too. Uh, It's a great way to kind of test yourself against some quality opponents, see where you're at. And then if you're able to do well in these tournaments and uh, it it really bodes well and kind of gets you you up full of steam, I guess, rolling forward into the season. So uh, it should be some good volleyball action there. Yeah, and uh, Lakeland, uh, probably the favorite at that tournament and probably the favorite a, a lot of times as they step onto the volleyball court this season. Lakeland Hawks are going to be a fun team to watch. So, all right, Garrison, I'll let you rest your voice since you're calling two games this weekend for us for IdahoSports.com. We'll wrap it up there. Sound good? That sounds like a plan to me. So uh, I'm done talking, folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that sounds great. Thanks for tuning in to uh, another edition of the Palouse PrepCast. Next week, I mean, we will have a full slate of uh, games to talk about. And also games to preview as we jump right into the heart of high school fall athletic season. So friendly reminder, you can get this podcast a couple of different ways. You can uh, get it at our website, idahosports.com. Across the top of the homepage, you'll see the prep casts drop down menu. You just click on the Palouse prep cast and bada bing, bada boom. It's right there for you. You can also download this podcast uh, wherever you download your podcasts. Uh, you can also get the video of this podcast on the idahosports.com Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel. So that'll do it for this edition of the Palouse Prep Cast. For Garrison Hardy, I'm Brandon Bainey. Enjoy the opening weekend, everybody, up there in District 2. And we'll-